I'm Henry. And I'm Irene. And we're here to give you a quick walk around our new greenhouse. Well, it's not exactly new, it's about a year old. But we've had a few number, a fair number of questions from friends asking about details about the greenhouse. So let's get for a walk. Welcome to the greenhouse. This is a working greenhouse and not a show greenhouse, so there's a lot of stuff in it. We have a seating bench on the right hand side. On the left hand side we have two benches for holding container grown plants. And on the far end, which we'll go in and see in a minute, there's also a hydroponics table. As you can see, this is definitely a work in progress. We have a lot of stuff, a lot of construction stuff, and some things that are actually done. One of the things that's actually done are some of Irene's seed starting trays over here, which we'll show you. And we also have a really cool wicking bed. It's a self-watering container. Uh, this is a wicking bed. That means the water is actually poured in through here and sits in the bottom and then wicks up into the dirt. I do top water it when I'm first um, starting seeds. Um, uh, it's going to be radishes and carrots. <laughs> the radishes have already come up, and so that tells me exactly where the carrots will come up, which is here, here, and here. And the reason I planted the radishes is Henry really likes radishes, but also it's a great way to mark the other rows uh, without having to put strings or some sort of other markers. Um, and it's sort of a bonus because you get the radishes while you're waiting for the carrots. Carrots are slower to germinate and slower to grow than the radishes are. So we'll actually be done eating the radishes probably before the carrots have even thought about making anything worth considering to be a carrot. Uh, these smaller ones up here are just trays that I started things in. And as you can see, um, we have radishes up through the middle and we have spinach starting on the sides here. And this was the first one that actually started popping up seedlings. Um, sort of surprised that nothing's come up in this area here. But that happens sometimes. We'll, we'll give it some time before we panic and replant. Um, both this one and its neighbor here are just shallow trays. This is a regular seed starting tray. This happens to be an old tray that my mother-in-law gave me. <laughs> and uh, the crab meat originally came in. And uh, see, this is all spinach in here. And some of these are actually starting to get their first true leaves. So hopefully this will come in nice. Uh, last winter, uh, we were busy building this in the middle of the winter. And come, I want to say February, we started up um, some trays of spinach, because, actually we started that with spinach and radishes, the, the self-watering bed, because uh, it seemed like every time we went to the grocery store to buy some sort of greens, there would be a panic and you'd have to throw away what you had in the fridge for fear that you were going to get poisoned with either E. coli or, or salmonella or listeria or something else. So we said, well, we know how to grow spinach, and I've done it before here in the garden, so in the wintertime. So, um, and it's not that we don't get cold, it's just that spinach is a really tough plant, same as radishes is. So we decided we would grow it in here last year. We didn't have anything fancy going on, we just had that little uh, tub that we showed you before. But we still were able to get one or two cuttings a week for several months. And I would just cut the individual leaves off and we'd have a nice little spinach salad and it was awesome. It was fresh, it was clean, we didn't have to worry about it. So we decided we were going to do the same thing this year. And we had planned to start it earlier, but then there were no panics, and then all of a sudden there were panics again about, <laughs> about greens, so we decided we needed to get going and just do it. This is our hydroponic Dutch bucket system that we'll be putting tomatoes out in in the next day or two. 
What's been holding me up and holding us up is we've been having temperatures in the 20s and I really don't want to take our tomato starts out and freeze them. As you can see the greenhouse is currently surrounded by straw bales on the outside but the actual structure itself is made up of steel tubes that we bent here on site and they're connected together by one by three inch pieces of wood that run along both the east and west side of, of the greenhouse. Above we have purlins. Purlin that runs east-west, but rather north-south, that we'll be using to put rollers on to allow the tomato plants and cucumber plants to climb. Well, this bench here is actually my seedling bench. Right now it's being used to hold tools and supplies for an assortment of projects. But in the spring, I put down heating mats here and start all my tomatoes and other vegetables and flowers, basically anything that can be transplanted gets started here. And I have a ton of the appropriate types of tray lids and trays and stuff like that that I buy in quantity. And I have the, the bottom trays. I have the kind of trays with spaces in them, like that. I have a couple of different sizes that lets me determine what size they're starting out as. And I'm also going to probably get some that... I know I have some smaller ones than that. I may also get some bigger ones. Uh, when they get, when they outgrow those, they go up into pots like this. And they stay in here until it's safe to take them out. Um, and when it's safe to take them out depends completely on each year's weather. Um, Technically, we're supposed to be done with frost in May, I think. But uh, we've seen it be done in April, and we've seen it be done in mid-June before. So we just have to make sure we're not going to freeze our plants once we get them out there. We have two 55-gallon water barrels here in the greenhouse. That's for a couple of reasons. One is it provides a little more heat stability on the north end of the greenhouse, but not terribly much. It keeps the water from freezing in the wintertime. If we were outside, there's a chance it would freeze. And the other reason is it's a lot more convenient in here. I'm able to acidify this water so that it's the right acid range for our seedling starts as well as for the hydroponic system. Irene standing by the water tank that we use for water for the greenhouse. Yeah, this water tank is actually used to provide water for the swamp cooler in the summertime to cool it down. Yeah, this is our swamp cooler. The water comes in from here, goes into here, and drains down, and the fans pull air across it, and it makes it cool down. It's something unique kind of to drier portions of the United States. Um, it doesn't use nearly as much power as a uh, air conditioner does, uh, but it does use water. And this is this is all rainwater collection here. We try not to use anything but rainwater in this because it won't clog up because it has a lower metal mineral content than uh, the groundwater here, which is extremely high mineral content. We've put straw along both the east and west side of the greenhouse. That's for this winter to provide some additional insulation. A friend saw pictures of the greenhouse and said, gee, it looks like you have something shading it. Well, we do, except for the first 12 feet of the greenhouse here on the south. Our friend said, gee, aren't you shading the greenhouse? Doesn't that cut down on sunlight? And the answer is absolutely yes, which is what we want to do and what we need to do. Both the shade cloth and the poly for the greenhouse covering 
are anchored to the greenhouse by this wiggle wire. The wiggle wire goes into a channel and holds both the poly and the shade cloth in place. We can remove the wiggle wire if we need to move the shade cloth. And in another four years, when it's time to replace the greenhouse covering, we can do that as well. We have ventilation in both the north and south ends of the greenhouse by using passive solar window openings. In the winter time, we have plastic covering the otherwise screen door. Now the screen door isn't enough to keep the greenhouse cool in the summertime. That's why we have the swamp cooler. 